Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. If this is your first time, let me give you a quick rundown on what we're all about. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we build fun and inexpensive focused Commander decks. A focused Commander deck is more attuned than a casual deck, but not quite to the level of a competitive or optimized deck. Today's episode is going to be a special one, though, where we exclude the cost of the Commander. With just a $25 budget, it's pretty much impossible to build around some Commanders unless we do so. Sometimes you get lucky and open up a Commander in a pack, or you could just trade for them if you really want to build around them. So our budget is still going to be $25, but again, that's $25 for just 99 cards because we're excluding the cost of that commander. And prices on this show are powered by our sponsor, TCG Player. Before we get started today, though, make sure you go check out our new classic pink playmat and Commander's Quarters t-shirts on thecommandersquarters.com. And thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise. It really does help support the channel. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click that little bell notification icon so that you can stay up to date on the latest Commander's Quarters episodes. Today's commander is Niv Mizzet Parent. Nib Mizzet Perrin is a 5 5 dragon wizard with flying that costs blue, 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 red, red, red. It has this spell can't be countered. Whenever you draw a card, Nib Mizzet Perrin deals 1 damage to any target, and whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, you draw a card. This commander provides an insane amount of value, drawing you cards not only when you play instants and sorceries, but also when your opponents do too. On top of that, it can ping any target when we draw a card, so we can either get rid of creatures or even opponents if we have enough draw. So, what's our strategy with this deck? Well, we want to ramp and fix our mana to get our commander out quickly. Nibbis at Perrin does have a very restrictive casting cost, so we really need to make sure that we have the right mana out there in order to cast it. This deck really revolves around our commander, so we need to make sure that we can get it out quickly so that we can get that engine online. And then how do we win with this deck? Well, we want to draw a ton of cards and utilize wheel effects in order to deal a ton of damage to our opponents and their creatures. The more cards that we can draw at once, the more damage we can do and the quicker we can close out the game. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to break this deck down into 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how you're going to win with it. So let's go into tactic number one, Cold Stone. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bauble, which we can pay 2 to tap and sacrifice it to search our library for a basic land to put into play tapped. Then there's Sphere of the Suns, which enters the battlefield tapped with 3 charge counters on it, and we can tap it to remove one of those charge counters to add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool. Next up, there's Corrupted Graphstone, which enters the battlefield tapped, and we can tap it to choose a color of a card in our graveyard, and then we add 1 mana of that color to our mana pool. With all the drawing and discarding in this deck, it's very easy for us to get cards into our graveyard. And then we're going to be running Star Compass, which enters the battlefield tapped, and it can tap for either of our colors depending on our land situation. Next up, we're going to be running Is It Signet, which we can pay one into it and tap it to add both of our colors to our mana pool. And then we're running three mana rocks that cost three and can tap for either of our colors. By paying a blue and a red into Is It Kirun, it becomes a 2 1 blue and red elemental artifact creature. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we can loot. We can pay a blue and a red and tap and sacrifice Is It Clue Stone to draw a card. And by paying 4 Is It into Is It Locket, we can tap it and sacrifice it to draw 2 cards. Next up, there's Vessel of Endless Rest, which can tap for any color, and when it enters the battlefield, we can put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. And then Astral Cornucopia is going to tap for a third of the amount of mana that we put into it. And finally, we're going to be running two different forms of ramp with Goblin Electromancer and Mana Geyser. Goblin Electromancer says, Instant and Sorcery spells you cast cost 1 less to cast. We're running a ton of Instants and Sorceries in this deck, so this card can save us a lot of mana. And then Mana Geyser is going to add red to our mana pool for each tap land our opponent's control. Even though this is a one-time effect, it can help us have a huge turn. So now that we've talked about ramping and fixing our mana to get our commander out, what do we do next? Let's see some of those ways that we can start drawing cards in tactic number two, small gains. First up, there's Faithless Looting, which is going to have us draw two cards and then discard two cards. So with this card for just one mana, we're going to be dealing three damage with our commander. And on top of that, it has flashback for two and a red, so we can do it again. And then we're going to be running Frantic Search, which is also going to let us draw two cards and discard two cards, but on top of that, it lets us untap up to three lands. So this card is just effectively free value for us. Next up, we're going to be running Brainstorm, which says, draw three cards, then put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. So for just one mana, we're going to be drawing a total of four cards and dealing four damage. And finally, we're going to be running Treasure Cruise, which has Delve, and it's going to let us draw three cards. As I've mentioned before, with this deck, it's very easy for us to get cards into our graveyard. So most of the times, this is just going to cost us one mana, and we're going to draw three cards. So we've talked about some cheap and efficient draw spells, but what about some bigger spells that make a larger impact? Let's go through them now in tactic number three, large investments. First up, there's Read the Runes, which says, draw X cards. For each card drawn this way, discard a card unless you sacrifice a permanent. Although we don't get to keep all the cards that we're going to be drawing, we still get to deal a ton of damage with our commander. Another X spell that we're going to be running is Pull From Tomorrow. It's going to allow us to draw X cards and then we have to discard just one card. So even though this costs us one more mana than Read the Runes, it does provide us with more value since we can keep most of the cards. And finally, there's Blue Sun Zenith, which says target player draws X cards, shuffle Blue Sun Zenith into its owner's library. Each of these X spells that we're running are at instant speed so that we can cast them right before our turn. That way we can keep mana up for other things if we need to. But there are plenty of other ways for us to draw a lot of cards at once, so let's go on to some of those ways in tactic number four, self-care. 
First up, we're going to be running Whirlpool Rider, which when it enters the battlefield, we're going to shuffle the cards from our hand into our library, then draw that many cards. Whirlpool Drake does the exact same thing, but it also does it a second time when it dies. And Whirlpool Warrior has the exact same effect as Whirlpool Rider, but we can also pay red to sacrifice it to make each player shuffle the cards from their hand into the library and then draw that many cards. While none of these are instants or sorceries, they are fantastic ways to draw a lot of cards at once. And then there's Forgotten Creation, which has at the beginning of your upkeep, you may discard all the cards in your hand if you do draw that many cards. This is a fantastic, repeatable way for us to draw a lot of cards. Next up, there's Talarian Winds, which is going to have us discard our hand and then draw that many cards. Collective Defiance can do the exact same thing, but we can also escalate it for one. So our other options are going to be to deal 4 damage to target creature or 3 damage to target opponent. Next up, there's Shattered Perception, which is also going to have us discard all the cards in our hand and then draw that many cards, but on top of that, it has Flashback for 5 and a red, so we can do it again. And then we're going to be running Fateful Showdown, which deals damage to target creature or player equal to the number of cards in our hand, then we discard our hand and then draw that many cards. With all the triggers off of Nib Mizzet, this card can deal a ton of damage. Next up, there's Credit Voucher, which we can pay 2 to tap and sacrifice it to shuffle any number of cards from our hand into our library and then draw that many cards. So with this card, we can wait for the time to be right in order to actually get the most value out of it. And finally, there's Liquanus's Creativity, which says target player draws cards equal to the number of cards in his or her hand, then discards that many cards. This is a fantastic way for us to not only draw a lot of cards, but also to keep the valuable cards that we need. So we've gone through a lot of wheel effects that really only affect us, but what about some ones that affect our opponents too? So let's go through them now in tactic number five, share the wealth. First up there's Flux, which says each player chooses and discards any number of cards, then draws that many cards, and we get to draw a card. While this type of selection can help out our opponents, it can really help us out too. And then there's Incendiary Command, which is going to let us choose two. We can have it deal four damage to target player, or deal two damage to each creature, or destroy target non-basic land, or make each player discard all the cards in their hand and then draw that many cards. We're pretty much always going to be choosing that last mode, and then the other modes are pretty flexible depending on the situation. Next up we're running some wheel effects that can really hurt our opponents. First there's Molten Psyche, which says each player shuffles the cards from his or her hand into his or her library, then draws that many cards. But on top of that, if we control three or more artifacts, Effects, it's going to deal damage to each opponent equal to the number of cards that player has drawn this turn. With the amount of wheel effects that we have in this deck, that number can actually get pretty high. And Corvass Fury says, for each player, choose friend or foe. Each friend discards all the cards from their hand, then draws that many cards plus one. Corvass Fury deals damage to each foe equal to the number of cards in their hand. So this is pretty much a one-sided wheel effect that can damage our opponents. Next up, we're going to be running Windfall, which says, each player discards their hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. This card can really come in huge when one of our opponents has more cards than us. And finally, we're running some wheel effects that are going to draw seven cards. First up, there's Game Plan, which says each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards. Exile Game Plan. On top of that, it has assists, so other players can actually help us pay for the cost if they want to. And then there's Diminishing Returns, which says each player shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into his or her library. You exile the top ten cards of your library, then each player draws up to seven cards. One of the most important parts of both of these cards is that it shuffles our graveyard back into our library. This deck draws a lot of cards, and we can easily mill ourselves out. So both of these cards are crucial at preventing that from happening. So we've talked a lot about doing things that we want to do, but what about stopping our opponents from doing what they want to do? Let's go through some ways to do that in tactic number six, try again. First up, there's Illusionist Gambit, which, to put it simply, just basically makes our opponent that attacked us with their creatures take those creatures back and swing at someone else. Depending on our opponent's boards, this can be very detrimental to everyone but us. And then Reigns of Power allows us to temporarily swap out our creatures with someone else's. So we can either use this defensively to block, or we can even use it offensively. This card is fantastic at surprising our opponents and finishing them off out of nowhere. Next up is Aetherize, which is going to return all attacking creatures to their owner's hand. So this card can really set back one of our opponents and leave them wide open. And then we're going to be running some spells that are a little more targeted with Into the Royal and Blink of an Eye. Both of these cards are the exact same thing. They're going to return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and if it's kicked, we're going to draw a card. So if we have the extra mana up, kicking it is just going to provide us with some more value. Next up, there's Aether Gale, which is going to return six target non-land permanents to their owner's hand. This is a fantastic card, especially in this deck when we can just wheel our opponent's hands away. Finally, there's River's Rebuke, which can really set one player back and make them a huge target. It's going to return all non-land permanents target player controls back to their hand. So we've talked about dealing with our opponent's permanents and protecting ourselves, but what about protecting our commander? Let's go through some ways to do that in tactic number 7, Perrin Protection. First up, there's Nurox Del Suit, which is going to give our commander Shroud, and we can attach it at instant speed for blue-blue. And then we're going to be running Mizium Skin, which can give target creature we control plus 0 plus 1 in hexproof, and we can even overload it to give our entire team that. We're also going to be running some counter spells that counter target non-creature spell with negate and unwind. On top of countering a non-creature spell, unwind is also going to untap up to 3 lands. And Rewind is very similar to Unwind, it's going to counter target spell and we can untap up to 4 lands. Finally there's Insidious Will, which is a very flexible counter spell. It's going to allow us to choose one, we can counter target spell, choose new targets for target spell, or copy target instant or sorcery spell and choose new targets for the copy. This card can work fantastically in this deck by helping us get some extra value out of a wheel. 
So with this deck, we've talked a ton about drawing cards and how that's going to trigger Niv Mizzet. Now, dealing one damage to any target is great, but what about some ways that we can make that even deadlier? So let's go through some ways to do that in tactic number eight, Death Squad. First up, there's Gorgon's Head and Gorgon Flail, both of which are going to give our commander Death Touch. So now, anytime we draw a card, Niv Mizzet is going to deal one damage to any target, and if it's a creature, that creature's just going to die. This means that anytime we can wheel, we can basically just wipe the board. These cards make it nearly impossible for our opponents to keep any creatures out there. But Silverclad Ferocidons might be an even deadlier card in this deck. It has Enrage. Whenever it's dealt damage, each opponent sacrifices a permanent. So with Nimizit's triggers, we can ping this creature up to four times in a turn without killing it. That means that each of our opponents are going to have to sacrifice four permanents. At a certain point, they're just going to run out of permanents and we're just going to win the game. But what are some other ways for us to finish off our opponents? Let's go through them now in tactic number nine, close it out. When the Marara Conjecture gets its first lore counter, we're going to return target instant card from our graveyard to our hand. With its second lore counter, we're going to return target sorcery from our graveyard to our hand. And its third lore counter says, until the end of the turn, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. And Swarm Intelligence does the exact same thing as its third lore counter. These are both fantastic ways at helping us close out a game by doubling up our wheel effects. Next up, there's Gutter Snipe, which says, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Gutter Snipe deals two damage to each opponent. We're going to be casting a ton of instants and sorceries with this deck, so this card can come in huge and finish off our opponents. And then there's Nib Mizzet the Fire Mine, which says, whenever you draw a card, Nib Mizzet the Fire Mine deals one damage to any target, and we can tap it to draw a card. This pigging effect is basically a second copy of our commander. Next up, we're going to be running Psychosis Crawler, which says, whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. This is a fantastic way to speed up our opponent's kill clocks and get them out of the game quicker. And finally, we're going to be running some creature producers with Murmuring Mystic and Talron Sky Summoner. Murmuring Mystic says, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-1 blue bird illusion creature token with flying. And Talron Sky Summoner says, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 2-2 blue drake creature token with flying. Both of these are fantastic ways at helping us create an evasive token army. But perhaps the best way to finish off our opponents is to go infinite. So let's go through exactly how we do that in tactic number 10, infinite possibilities. First off, we're going to be running Dizzy Spell, which doesn't go infinite with our commander, but it helps us get the card that does. It has transmute for one blue blue, so we can discard it and then search our library for a card with a converted mana cost of one and put it into our hand. And that card is going to be the golden pig of the deck, which is the number one card out of our 99. And the golden pig for this deck is Curiosity. Curiosity is an aura that costs a blue, and it says whenever enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. So if we can attach Curiosity to either of our nib mizzets, we can basically just win the game. Because once we draw a card, we can deal damage to one of our opponents. And then Curiosity will let us draw a card since we dealt damage to an opponent. And then when we draw that card, we can deal another damage. And so on and so forth until all of our opponents are dead. The one catch here is that we need to have our opponents at low enough life so we don't mill ourselves out. But again, we've got a few cards in this deck that can help us shuffle our graveyard back into our library to prevent them milling. This card can just straight up win us the game for only one mana, and that's why it's the golden pig of this deck. We're also going to be running Aphidian Eye, which does the exact same thing, except it costs us two more and it has Flash. Flash can really come in handy and help us steal games out of nowhere. And finally, there's Tandem Lookout, which does the exact same thing, except it's a creature with Soul Bond. So by pairing it with Nimizit, both creatures are going to have, whenever this creature deals damage to an opponent, draw a card. This deck can be incredibly powerful and kill all of our opponents out of nowhere. But now that we've gone through the cards that help us win with this deck, let's go through the cards that help make it happen. It's time to go on to the mana base. First up, we're going to be running Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds, both of which we can tap to sacrifice to search our library for a base land and put in play tapped. Then there's Grixis Panorama, which can either tap for a colorless, or we can pay one to tap and sacrifice it to search our library for a swamp or a mount and put in play tapped. Next up is Warp Landscape, which can tap for a colorless, or we can pay two to tap and sacrifice it to search our library for a base land and put in play tapped. And then there's Is It Guildgate, Highland Lake, and Swiftwater Cliffs, each of which enter the battlefield tapped and tap for either a blue or red mana. On top of that, Swiftwater Cliffs will gain us one life when it comes into play. Next up is Is It Boiler Works, which enters the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield, we have to return a land back to our hand. It does have the upside, though, of tapping for blue red. And finally, we're going to be running 28 basic lands, 19 will be islands, and 9 will be mountains. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG player optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Nimizit Perrin EDH rec deck is going to set you back $167.84, so let's see how we compare to that. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at just $24.98. And just a quick reminder that our deck cost actually doesn't include our commander because it is a commander excluded episode. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are built to be tuned in focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, there's Winds of Change, which comes in at $5.88. It's a sorcery that costs a red, and it says each player shuffles the cards from their hand into their library, then draws that many cards. This is a fantastic and very cheap wheel effect. And then there's Grafted Exoskeleton, which comes in at $2.13. It's an equipment that costs 4 and it costs 2 to equip. It says Equip Creature gets plus 2 plus 2 and has Infect, and whenever Grafted Exoskeleton becomes unattached from a permanent, sacrifice that permanent. If we can get this equipped to our commander, it's going to help us kill our opponents a lot quicker. 
Next up is Primal Amulet, which comes in at $3.12. It's an artifact that costs 4 and it says instant and sorcery spells you cast cost 1 less to cast. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a charge counter on Primal Amulet, then if there are 4 more charge counters on it, you remove those counters and transform it. It transforms into Primal Wellspring, which says tap to add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. When that mana is spent to cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy that spell and you may choose new targets for the copy. So this card can either help us reduce the cost of our spells, or it can help us copy some of our instants and sorceries. And then there's Thousand Year Storm, which comes in at $2.46. It's an enchantment that costs 4 blue red. It says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it for each other instant and sorcery spell that you've cast before it this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. This card can really help us lead to some insane turns with the right cards in our hand. Next up is Mind Moil, which comes in at $2.80. It's an enchantment that costs 4 and a red, and it says whenever you play a spell, put the cards in your hand on the bottom of your library in any order, and then draw that many cards. With our commander in play, the amount of damage that we can put out gets out of control very quickly. And finally, there's Arjun the Shifting Flame, which comes in at $6.82. It's a 5-5 Sphinx Wizard with flying, and it costs 4 blue red. It says whenever you cast a spell, put the cards in your hand on the bottom of your library in any order, then draw that many cards. So this does the exact same thing as Mind Moil, which is a fantastic effect to have in the deck. If you want to see what cards I would swap out for the reasonable upgrades for this deck, click on that link on the top right to see our reasonably upgraded episode on it. And with that, our show is coming to a close, but I really just want to hear about what you think about this deck, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. When you're buying decks like this one, or just individual cards, make sure you use that decklist link in the description below. Not only will you be getting great prices on TCG Player, but you're also going to be supporting this show because they sponsor us. And make sure that you follow us on social media so you can get some early hints on who the next commander just might be. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tacks. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tack dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel, and watch the reasonably upgraded episode on this deck tech. And while you're at it, check out some of our other budget deck techs, commander excluded deck techs, and break the bank episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.